I'm talking to Sassine Ghazi, President and CEO of Synopsis, and uh, we're here at Snug 23 in uh, Santa Clara, uh, California. Sassine, hello. Hello, Nitin. So you've uh, ha had a, uh, the launch of uh, the AI-driven uh, uh, design flow uh, for the whole stack. How did that start out in 2017? I think you, you have a story about that. Yeah, yeah, I have a great story for you. Uh, so around 2016, uh, there was that uh, big sensation with AlphaGo from Google that a machine was able to beat a human with the Go game. And I remember around 2017, early 17, two great engineers came to me and they said, we don't know if it's possible, but can we put a small investment to see if we can use a similar technology of a reinforcement learning, which was similar to the AlphaGo uh, technology, and see if we can apply it to chip design. And uh, uh, we had a number of discussions around that point. Then I said yes under a couple conditions. One, you will not bring anyone from inside Synopsys with a domain uh, knowledge because they're going to give you incremental uh, improvement because they're going to say, I've done it before, or et cetera, et cetera. So try to go seek people from the outside with no knowledge of semiconductor and you be the architect of what is possible. And what, uh, then the second condition is by when will I see a prototype? So it cannot be a science project. And at the time they told me within six months we should know is there, there, there or not. And it's amazing in even a shorter period of time when you look at the chip design and the opportunity to optimize through the many, many parameters of optimization, what we were able to achieve with DSO.AI. And if I remember correctly, in the late 2018, early 2019, we won the Innovation of the Year Award uh, for that AI system. Mm. And we started launching it with customers around that time frame. And now, as you know, we have more than 160-ish or so uh, uh, in production tape outs using that yes. system. So what we announced today is synopsis.ai. How do you expand AI beyond that uh, uh, design space optimization to verification, to test, to analog, to manufacturing? So the whole stack of the chip uh, development and using AI as a uh, disruptor mm. uh, to enable that innovation. So in the keynote this morning with Art, uh, I think he showed some, um, not sure whether there were animations or there were actual actual simulations of showing how it sort of brought that curve you know, that's right. further in. That's right. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, sort of how that's being yes. enabled. So there are really two phases when you think of uh, implementing AI. There is the exploration phase and then there's the optimization phase. So when you give a new chip to an AI system, uh, you're really looking for optionality. So you let the AI system explore what is possible with the input you gave it. And then once you say, this is good enough, now I wanna move from exploration to optimization, you start seeing that curve closing to say, this is the best outcome I can achieve based on the input that you provided me. Uh, and it's, Again, what Art showed few examples with design optimization, with verification optimization, and with test. And also like trained and un uh, untrained and That's trained right. as well. That's right. That's right. So uh, when you give the AI system a fresh requirements, a new architecture, a new design, uh, a new uh, foundry manufacturing requirements, uh, and it's the first time the AI system is seeing uh, that space of optimization, uh, that's the untrained, then let's assume you change something in your design or something in your foundry requirement. Mm. Uh, it has the ability to quickly take what it trained on the previous data space and provide you the next level of optimization. Okay. Let's change tech a little bit. Um, so one of the, your roles is around uh, sort of connecting with your customers and talk, talking to them, see what their requirements are. Tell me a little bit about where, where things are heading. Yeah, what are what are your customers seeing right now? Sorry, asking you right now that you can't do and you'd like to do. You know, there is um, such an excitement right now in the industry. Not I'm not talking only about the semiconductor industry. In the broad industry around mm. AI and what is possible with AI mm. It's very interesting since Chat GPT 
became a practical use for any person that decided to download and experiment and explore. Uh, it brought many questions to many companies. What can they do by using AI to improve their own processes, their own customer engagement? How can AI uh, create efficiency and accelerate their differentiation and innovation? It can be in agriculture, in industrial, in healthcare, in any, any space. To us, the reason that's super exciting, the moment you're running AI uh, and you're training the model, the AI model, it requires massive amount of computation mm. in order to train a model. Yeah. Computation is provided through chips and you differentiate in the end market ba based on the software you're running on that chip, mm. the workload for that chip. And to us, it's an opportunity on both ends. Mm. More customers using AI, they want to create a digital twin of the chip so they can bring up the software early. And how do you support and create uh, a chip that is optimized for a specific workload and specific architecture? So those are the opportunities that we see. Um, it's, 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 I've been at Synopsys for a long time. Okay. And when I, uh, if you go back not too long ago, say 10 years ago, a Google and Microsoft, uh, Baidu, any hyperscaler, they had no reason to talk to Synopsys. Mm. Right now we're, we're deep working with every one of them. An OEM of a co uh, automotive, a Mercedes-Benz, a Ford, GM, Toyota, they had no idea who Synopsys was. There was mm. no reason for them. Mm. Now we're being pulled in because they see the opportunity of optimizing their software and their workload for uh, all the way down the stack to the semiconductor chip that powers it. So um, uh, mm. everything's exciting in the industry at the moment, I guess, for you. But yeah, what excites uh, Sassine most? <laughs> ah, the, the, these things, innovation and the opportunity to really get out of your comfort zone of this is how we've been doing things as an industry, or this is how uh, our business model is, or this is the space we're in to really open up that lens. Uh, when people think of Synopsys, if you ask the old timers that have been in the industry for a long time, they're like, oh, you're the synthesis company uh, that I use your tool in order to get my chip uh, done. Uh, we became the EDA plus IP company. I need you in order to integrate uh, pieces of your IP into my chip. Then we become right now the silicon to software company uh, that uh, you're, you can help me with your system digital twin uh, capability if I'm a system guy to uh, decide how much do I want to do at the hardware level, at the chip level. So those are super, super exciting. Okay, what's the scene? Thank you very much. Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> Thank you. I hope that was what you were looking for.